Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. So now our tracking functionality is fully working. We are able to track the run of a user. But what we need to do now is we need to be able to show the ones that we saved in our database in our recycler view. And that is what we are going to do in this video. So let's start by creating a new package called adapters. And inside of this new package, we are going to create a new Kotlin file or class that is called run adapter. Select class here, and that run adapter will inherit from recycler view dot adapter. And here we need to pass our view holder that we don't have yet. I'm just going to use run adapter dot run view holder, which we will create right now. That is an inner class run view holder that will take an item view as a parameter, which is a view, and that will inherit from recycler view dot view holder, which will also need that item view as a parameter. Then I'm going to press control and I to implement those recycler view functions, select all of them, press enter. But first of all, what I want to implement in this class is a list differ. If you don't know what a list differ is, that is basically just a tool that takes two lists and calculates the differences between that list and also returns them. So that is very efficient for recycler views because we only need to update those items that are different when we have two lists. So we don't need to update the whole list all the time. Instead, we will use that list differ that goes through the list. So the old list and the new list that with which we want to update the recycler view. And it only updates those items that are new in the new list or that are changed basically. And for that list differ, we need a differ callback, which is basically a way to tell that list differ how two items look like that are the same and how two items look like that have the same contents. So that is a val diff callback, which I'll set to an anonymous class object diffutil dot item callback of type run because we want to compare two run objects because each object in our list is a run object. And in here, I'm going to press control and I implement those two functions here. And actually, I need to call the constructor here like that. And yeah, as you can see, we have those two functions, are items the same and are contents the same. First of all, for the function, are items the same? Well, it basically tells you what it wants from us. It wants to know if that old item is the same item as the new item. It doesn't want from us if those items have the same content, but if they are the same item. And in that case, we will return if the old item dot ID is equal to new item dot ID, then we know that that is the same item, but the contents of those items. So for example, the average speed of that item or the, the date could change, but if those two items have the same ID, we know they are the same item. For the are contents the same function, this works a little bit differently because now it wants to know from us if the old item and the new item actually really have the same contents, if they have the exact same bitmap, if they have the exact same average speed and so on, and how to get those contents. Well, we can simply return old item dot hash code is equal to new item dot hash code. So if you don't know what that hash code function is for, that is just a function that calculates the hash value out of the old item and out of the new item. A hash value is basically just the result out of a one way function. So we cannot convert a hash back to that old item or that new item, but we can use it to compare two items. And if those hash values are the same, we can say 100% that those items must be 100% the same. So not only the ID, instead also all the properties that, that those items have, the bitmap must be the same, the average speed and so on, all of that must be the same, that those two items have the same hash code. And now that we have that differ callback, we can use that to construct our actual list differ, which is a val differ, and we set it equal to an async list differ, so it will do that asynchronously in the background, which is also an advantage of that. And for that, we need to first pass the recycler view adapter, which is just this, and then the differ callback. So we pass our differ callback here. Then I'm going to create a function 
to submit a list to that list differ so that the list differ calculates the differences and updates our recycler view accordingly. Um, that will be a list of type run. And that will just use our list differ, our differ here, and call dot submit list with our just passed list. And the rest of that class is pretty straightforward. I guess you have worked with recycler views before if you're watching this series. So in our onCreate viewholder function, we're just going to inflate the layout of each item. So we are returning the run viewholder here. And in here, we're going to use our layout inflator call dot, no, dot from, first of all, with our parent dot context. And then we're going to call inflate on that. That inflate function needs our layout resource, which is r dot layout dot item run. Need to import r here. Item run, there it is. Then we need to pass the view group, which is parent here. And we don't want to attach that to the root layout. And that's all we did for our onCreateViewHolder function. In our getItemCount function, we are going to return differ.currentList.size. So that is the way how we can get access to the current list of our list differ. And in onBindViewHolder, we're going to set the data of each item here. I first want to get reference to the current run object. So val run is equal to differ, not differ callback, differ dot current list at the index of position. And then we can use our holder dot item view dot apply and make some changes on its views. And then first we want to load the image, our bitmap into the image view. For that I'll use glide, glide dot width. Then we're going to pass the view, which is just this here, dot load. Now we need to specify the image we want to load here, which is run.bitmap, or how is it called? Run.image dot into, now we have to specify the target. So the image view we want to load that into, and that is just image view run image. Next, we want to display the date of the run. And as you maybe know, we save the date as a timestamp in milliseconds in our database. And of course, we don't want to display the milliseconds in our recycler view, we want to display a real date. And to do that, we can use a calendar object. So well, calendar is equal to new calendar, not a new calendar, just calendar dot get instance here, dot apply. And here we can set the time in millis of that calendar to run dot timestamp. Don't choose time in millis here. That is a little bit confusing here. Choose timestamp because the timestamp of our run is basically the date in milliseconds. And then we can use that calendar object to format that timestamp, that time in millis to an actual date. For that, we're going to choose a date format. Well, date format is equal to simple date format. Um, here we need to choose a pattern for that. So how that date should look like. In my case, I want to display the day. So two digits for the day, and then we make a dot. Then I want to have two digits for the month, then you need to make a capital M here. That's just how it is. And then two digits for the year. And after that, we need to specify a locale, which is just locale dot get default. And now with that date format object and our calendar object, we can format that date as we want it. So we can use our TV date text view and set its text to date format dot format. And here we need to pass a time. So in form of a date, and for that we can use our calendar. So calendar dot time. And that is everything we need to do to format that accordingly. Next, we're going to have the average speed. So well, average speed is equal to run dot average speed in kilometers per hour and append a kilometers per hour here. And that's basically it. Now we can use our text view average speed dot text is equal to average speed. And then we are going to have our distance in kilometers. So well, distance in kilometers is equal to run dot distance in meters divided by a 1000 because that is in meters and we want it in kilometers. So we divide it by a 1000 and append a kilometers here. Then we can use our text view 
um, distance dot text is equal to distance in kilometers. Then we need to set the duration of that run in the text view. So TV time dot text is equal to tracking utility dot get formatted stopwatch time. And here we need to pass the milliseconds. So that is just run dot time in millis. And we don't want to include the actual milliseconds here in the recycler view item because that is just a little bit too accurate, I think, and is an information that we don't need there. And then we only need to set the calories burned. So we create a string val calories burned and set that equal to run dot calories burned and append calories afterwards. And then we can use our TV calories dot, dot text here and set that to calories burned. And that is it for our run adapter here. Now we can go into our run fragment and set up that run adapter here or that recycler view. So first of all, I'm going to create a private late in var run adapter, which is a run adapter. And I'm going to create a function private function setup recycler view. Set that equal to rv runs dot apply. In here, I'm going to instantiate our run adapter. So run adapter is equal to new run adapter. Then we're going to assign the adapter of that recycler view to our run adapter. We are going to assign the layout manager of our recycler view, now load inflator layout manager, to a new linear layout manager, linear layout manager, and pass require context here. And that is basically it for that function. Now we can call that function in our on view created function, set up recycler view. And we also want to observe on changes from our database, for which I will create for now just a simple live data object in our main view model. We will change that in the next video when we want to be able to filter our runs. But right now I won't implement that functionality. Instead, I'm just going to create live data here. Runs sorted by date. Set that equal to main repository dot get all runs sorted by date. Then in our run fragment, we can use that live data. So our view model dot run sorted by date dot observe pass our view lifecycle owner and an observer. And in here, we can simply use our run adapter dot submit list and pass it. And then we can run our app, see if it is working, open up our emulator. And there we go. Click on continue. And as you can see, our run is displaying that we added in the last video, we can also try that out to add a new run. Start tracking here, I'll start the route two. like this. Okay, now it connected the old coordinate with the new one because I changed the route. But anyways, doesn't matter for that test run. Let's click on stop finish run. And now you can also see that it works pretty well with that bounce that we implemented in the last video, that we make a screenshot of the whole run so that the whole polyline is visible. And you can also see that little bit of padding here that we implemented in the last video so that the most outer coordinate is not on the border of our map view. And you can also see that the text views here are all displaying what we want. We have the date properly formatted, we have the time of the run, we have the the amount of kilometers, the speed, which is pretty high here because it immediately jumped from there to here. And we have the calories burned. Yeah, so everything is working perfectly fine. I hope you learned something new in this video. If so, please let me know below. And also if you have any questions, then just ask them below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. See you in the next video. Bye bye.